Adobe releases a new AI tool for Illustrator, Meta announces a different approach to more human-like AI image generation, and AMD is trying to keep up with NVIDIA with a new AI super chip. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less, and once again, it is going to be a challenge to fit it in five minutes. Yesterday, Matt Wolf tweeted, Tuesdays, what is it about Tuesdays that makes all the AI news flood in at once? And indeed, there was even more news that I could fit in my first five. So what we're going to do today is go through the most important announcements, starting with a few that didn't even make it into that top five. The first is that we've got another leaked AI document, this time from Amazon, and it's all about how the company sees opportunities to use ChatGPT and other AI at work. So what I find interesting about this is that there are many corporations around the world that are currently creating policies that effectively amount to you can't use AI. And it's not just Luddite companies, right? Samsung and Apple have both created really strict prohibitions on what tools their employees can use, and understandably so. There are concerns around information privacy and proprietary trade secrets and all of that. But this document from Amazon that was obtained by Business Insider is called Generative AI ChatGPT Impact and Opportunity Analysis. It was apparently created by managers at Amazon after they started asking employees to come up with ideas for how to use AI chatbot tech to improve not only Amazon products, but also how they work internally. There are in this document 67 different ideas. They range from using ChatGPT to generate software code and marketing materials, to creating an engineering app that could answer questions related to AWS services, to developing a ChatGPT-style search bar for Amazon shoppers that can explain pros and cons between brands and cite and summarize user reviews. In an email response to Insider, a representative from Amazon said, Though still in its very early days, we are investing in generative AI across all of our businesses and have a significant number of unique capabilities that we already offer or that we're working hard to bring to customers in the near future. Now, this does come just a few months after Amazon's lawyers recommended that employees not share confidential information with ChatGPT. So I guess we'll have to see if the managers or the lawyers hold sway when it comes to what the company actually does. Next up, we've been talking a lot recently about enterprise AI, and Oracle's Larry Ellison has just confirmed on their earnings call that they are now partnering with new generative AI service Cohere. On the call, he said, Cohere and Oracle are working together to make it very, very easy for enterprise customers to train their own specialized large language models while protecting the privacy of their training data. And then confirming exactly what we were saying yesterday, he said, over the next few years, lots of companies are going to train their own specialized large language models. Next up, a cool tool release from Adobe. Yesterday, they held their annual Max event in London, and one of the new tools they announced was Generative Recolor. This is a tool for Illustrator that allows people to use text to modify vector images. The value proposition is that sometimes people who are working with vector artwork need variations, either because they're trying to find the best version or because they simply need a lot of different versions of a thing for some sort of branded content. So the benefits here are quicker experimentation, easier modification, and different color and image combinations for unique applications. Now, speaking of image generation, it's a day that ends in Y, which means that Meta has released yet another piece of open source AI research. This one is called iJPA, and it's a new model for AI image generation that Meta claims is more human-like. iJPA stands for Image Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture. Rather than comparing pixels as do some other image generation models, iJPA learns by creating what they call an internal model of the outside world. The way of example, Meta's research page shows four images in which they gave the model an image that had part of it removed. So for example, a dog's head without the eyes in the top of the nose, a bird that was missing its feet, a wolf that was missing its legs, and a building that was missing part of the structure. The model then produces a sketch of what it thinks should be in the missing slot, and based on their research, does a good job of recognizing what should go in those missing parts of the image. Alpha Signal AI sums up some of the implications and takeaways. He writes, iJPA can be used for many different applications without fine tuning and is highly scalable, and the model predicts missing information at a high level of abstraction, avoiding generative model limitations. Next up, one really cool little one. One of the big rate limiting factors for startups right now who are developing new approaches to AI or new models is just their access to compute. We've heard over and over again about how hard getting GPUs is. It's part of why NVIDIA has gone up so much in value this year. And as we heard from Sam Altman in that developer meeting a couple weeks ago, it's a huge limiting factor for companies like OpenAI who are changing their product release schedule because of the availability or lack thereof of computing power. Well, former GitHub CEO Nat Friedman and his frequent investment collaborator Daniel Gross have set up a new 10 exaflop cluster for startups that they call the Andromeda Cluster. 
In a note on Twitter, they say it's available for experiments, training runs, and inference, no minimum duration in what they call superb pricing, and big enough to train Llama 65 billion parameters in around 10 days. Strikes me as a very cool value add for investors to bring to their startup ecosystem. Now, speaking of OpenAI, they made a huge announcement yesterday with a number of API updates, including what they call functional calling, but that is going to be the subject for the main AI breakdown. So check out that video, which was released just a little bit after this one. And then, of course, there is AMD. Now, as we have discussed over and over on this show, one of the big stories of 2023, especially for public markets, has been the rise of NVIDIA. By basically any metric, NVIDIA absolutely dominates the market for AI chips. Analysts put their market share at somewhere around 80%. There are, however, a few other players in the space, and of them, AMD is one of the most significant. Earlier this year, AMD saw a big pop in their stock price when there were rumors that they were working with Microsoft on their project Athena, which was a new AI chip project, although ultimately Microsoft denied that rumor. But now we're getting a few more details about how AMD plans to try to counter NVIDIA's dominance. While NVIDIA had previously announced its MI300X chip, we got a lot more information about it yesterday. AMD CEO Lisa Su said that the chip and its architecture were designed specifically for LLMs and AI models. The chip can use up to 192 gigabytes of memory, as compared to the H100's 120 gigabytes of memory. At the demo yesterday, they showed the MI300X running a 40 billion parameter model that's called Falcon. Trying to keep parity with other chip developers, AMD also said that it's offering what they call an Infinity architecture that combines eight of the chip accelerators into one system. And they've also announced a new software suite called Rock M, which competes with NVIDIA's CUDA software package that has historically been one of the reasons why AI developers preferred NVIDIA chips over AMD. Now, a lot of the mainstream financial analysis basically took all of AMD's announcements as them just trying to catch up to NVIDIA and NVIDIA having kind of too big of a lead for them to overcome. However, one thing that many in the developer community took note of was that they were also announcing a partnership with Hugging Face to tap into the open source community to accelerate development of both CPU and GPU models. In their announcement post, Hugging Face writes, whether language models, large language models, or foundation models, transformers require significant computation for pre-training, fine-tuning, and inference. To help developers and organizations get the most performance bang for their infrastructure bucks, Hugging Face has long been working with hardware companies to leverage acceleration features present on their respective chips. Today, we're happy to announce that AMD has officially joined our hardware partner program. This partnership is excellent news for the Hugging Face community, which will soon benefit from the latest AMD platforms for training and inference. The selection of deep learning hardware has been limited for years, and prices and supply are growing concerns. This new partnership will do more than match the competition and help alleviate market dynamics. It should also set new cost performance standards. You might remember a few weeks ago when that Google memo dropped, it argued that companies like Google and OpenAI were going to get beat ultimately by open source approaches to developing AI. Could AMD's partnership with Hugging Face, which is at the very epicenter of the AI open source movement, actually make a difference in their fight against NVIDIA? Hard to say, but it's also hard not to welcome the new competition and the new approach to it. Anyways, guys, that is it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying, please like, subscribe, and share, and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode. And I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown, which is all about why this new OpenAI API announcement is actually very significant and reflective of a change of phase for the overall AI space.